All right, welcome back everyone. So today's topic is gonna be battery systems and some of the basic questions, I guess, if you're looking at a EAPU system. Some of the questions you need to be asking or looking at some of the different specs when you're looking at specking one of these systems out. All right, hi everybody and welcome back to Idle and Emission Solutions where we're tackling the biggest repair and maintenance issues in the industry. We're talking about idle reduction, EGR, DOC, DPF, SCR, knock sensor issues, temp sensor issues, all the things that cost you a bunch of money. Subscribe, hit the bell for the updates, and like the video because you never know when that one video could save you thousands. So whether you know it or not, I mean pretty much every truck out there these days, you technically have a EAPU system. With all the electronics these days, I mean, Everybody seems like everybody's got a refrigerator or a, uh, an electric uh, cooler. Everybody's got a two, 3,000, 4,000 watt inverter. Uh, I see a lot of guys adding extra lights in the cabs. So you got all these extra accessories, basically microwaves, ovens, water boilers, all this stuff. So you're powering all that stuff off of those whatever batteries that you have. So with everything, you know, with all the comforts at home that everybody's brought into their trucks now, you essentially, whether you know it or not, even though you don't have a diesel uh, a carrier or a tri-pack or whatever, I mean, you technically have a battery bank that you're using for a source of power when the truck is not running. So we see a lot of times these days, you know, standard uh, lead acid batteries, your regular 925 CCAs, they don't last. Years ago, you used to get three years out of a set of batteries, but now you're lucky to get 18 months. There's a lot of guys that come in, we see at 12 months, you know, they've got a 12 month old set of batteries, regular, you know, standard run the mill lead acid batteries and, and they're shot just because we're running so many cycles through them and that's not what they're intended to do. Now AGMs get a little bit better than your base lead acid batteries, but they technically, they still are a lead acid battery. They're a little bit more robust that they are a dual purpose battery. So you get a little bit more runtime out of those, you know, usually you see 30 months or something out of a good set of uh, AGMs. Now, the next step is uh, the lithium batteries, which is what we're selling in all of our systems, not just a lithium battery bank battery, but a dual purpose lithium battery bank and starting battery. So that's kind of the best of the best, in my opinion. So you're able to use those for starting with all the state of the art features and also as your battery bank. So with that, uh, let's kind of get into the, uh, the nuts and bolts of this discussion. So Every battery has a rating in amp hours. Some of them don't advertise it, like on your regular lead acid batteries, they're, you know, your 925 CCAs, they don't actually have like an amp hour rating, like most of your, uh, your AGMs and your uh, lithium, deep cycle lithium batteries. And uh, like I said, us here, we have a dual purpose lithium starting and deep cycle battery that's combined in a dual purpose. So typically most of your AGMs and your lithiums out there are rated at 100 amp hour. There's not a lot of numbers out there about your regular run-of-the-mill lead acid batteries, and from what I've seen out there, they're about 50 amp hours, roughly. So about half the capacity of your dual-purpose batteries. And that's because they're made for starting the truck, not for running lights and refrigerators and everything over long periods of time. So when you're looking at a EAPU system, and I mean a complete system with your AC unit, an inverter installed and uh, whatever else you're going to add to this complete system. I know we get a lot of questions here about, okay, how long is it going to run for? How, how much runtime am I going to get? And that all comes down to the capacity of your system and how much amperage you're going to be drawing from the system and, and everything else that you're running at the same time. So it's, and those numbers are going to be fluctuating, you know, if you're running through an eight hour period, those numbers are gonna go up and down depending on the loads on the system that you're drawing, whether it's an AC system, refrigerator cycling on and off, running your microwave, all that stuff. So I got the whiteboard here with me to kind of draw this out and make things a little bit visually pleasing, I guess you could say. So the main thing, we're gonna kind of relate this to like a gas tank and your fuel economy. So here, these are, this is gonna be your battery bank. And we're gonna say we got four of our uh, lithium dual purpose batteries in here and each one of these is 100 amp hour. So that gives you a capacity, a total capacity of 400 amp hours. Now, just because you have a base of 400 amp hours doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get a full 400 amp hours of capacity. So it's kind of like you have a, like a, just like in a fuel tank, you have the usable capacity. So the particular batteries that we have here, they will go dormant once they get down to 10%. So what I'm saying is once they, once you draw those batteries down to the 10%, so 
since they are a starting battery as well, and they do have a computer board, a BMS, battery management system, in order to protect the truck to be able to start, when they get the 10%, they're gonna shut themselves off, everything in your truck's gonna shut off, and you're like, okay, I need to shut my truck, or I need to plug into some other charging source. So the actual, the usable capacity of this system is gonna be 360 amp hours, roughly, give or take. So, so that's what you're, with a, with a four battery, 100 amp hour system, that's what you're gonna see. Now with AGMs and other technology, uh, AGMs, as they get older, and we're gonna, we're gonna have a couple battery, Pacific battery videos where we're gonna talk about different, uh, different types of lithium batteries, different types of AGMs, and in the older technology, uh, the older lead acid batteries as well. Um, so I'm not gonna get really in depth in this video on that. So again, with AGMs over time, they won't charge all the way and they won't draw down all the way. So after maybe 18 months, your batteries may only go down to 30, 40% and that's all you're gonna get out of them. Then when they go to charge, they might only charge 85%. So over time, you start losing that runtime, and that's why there's kind of a a bad rap, I guess you could say, with the EAPU industry is that, you know, after 20 months, two years, 30 months, you know, guys, they're only getting two hours of runtime out of their system, and it's because the batteries are shot, because you're just, you're not able to charge them all the way, and you're not a, able to suck them all the way down, because they just, they're just out of cycles, basically. So, anyways, back to the topic here. So, 360 amp hour system. So, if you're looking at a system, these are the questions you need to be asking. Okay, so what is the average amp draw, or what's the spectrum from the minimum to the highest amperage draw. So with our 12 volt system, we're gonna say around 40, 40 amp hours would be a good average, uh, you know, under normal, you know, 80 degree weather. I mean, obviously if you get into hotter conditions, like if you're in the middle of Arizona and it's 115, then you might be pulling 60 amps more, more continuously because the compressor, it's always gonna be running harder, everything's hotter. As components and uh, wire gets hotter, it, it causes more resistance, so it kind of compounds and everything works harder when you're in a lot hotter environment. So then you will see that amperage draw go up. So it's kind of like, the best way to rate it to is like fuel economy. So if you're out on nice flat ground, you know, and you're not pulling heavy load, I mean, you're gonna get better fuel economy, obviously, uh, or a higher MPG. So if you're in the mountains and you're going up and down hills and it's working a lot hard, harder, your MPG is gonna go down. So it's the same theory or logic with what we're doing here with, with your amperage draw and amp hours. So, but again, this is like your fuel tank your average amperage draw is kind of like your MPG. So to make this simple, <laughs> I'm just, instead of saying 40 amp hours, I'm gonna say 36 amp hours. And we're gonna say that's your average draw. Now, if you have other components in your truck, you can purchase a clamp meter. This is a Fluke, it's a little bit more expensive unit. You can find cheaper ones for like 60 bucks on Amazon or whatever, get you a, a DC clamp meter, make sure it's a DC one. And uh, when you got everything running in your truck, you can go out to one of your battery cables and actually put this on and, and see what your amperage is. So, I mean, if you're trying to do your research and trying to spec out like how much amp hour capacity you're looking for or what you need to get a certain amount of time, you need to know those amperage draws, then kind of get a high and a low point, then average them out, then you can spec out, you know, a proper size system. So we're gonna say our average load on this system is 36 amps. And then we're gonna divide 360 by the 36 and that's going to give us 10, which that is 10, 10 hours of runtime. So theoretically, if you were pulling an average of 36 amps at a usable capacity of 360 amp hours, you're going to get 10 hours of runtime. Okay, and the reason this is all important is I, I see a lot of companies out there. I don't think they're being very truthful in their runtimes, and that's very important because you spend you know, a good amount of money on these systems, and you get out there, and you're only getting three, four hours out of it. You know, if you spent nine, ten thousand dollars for a system, it, you're going to be kind of upset. So that's why you need to ask these questions and actually look at the, at the specs of the systems. Because, like I said, I, a lot of other competitors out there that we've looked at would just say they just say up to 20 hours. So I mean, that's a big spectrum because on the low side, I mean, that time might only be three or four hours. So that's where, like, where you really need to look at the amp hours of the system capacity, and then that average amperage or look at that that range. They're going to be giving you the the lowest into the spectrum when they're calculating those times. So if it's only, the low end of the spectrum is only 25 amps on a 400 amp hour system, then yeah, it's gonna put you up there that 15, 16 hours. But on the high end of the amperage draw, again, you might be down to, you know, to two to four hours. So it's important that you look at those numbers and ask questions about that. So that way, if you do invest in a system, you're not disappointed. Because, I mean, and there's ways to, 
uh, expand the system as well. Like with the systems we sell, all of our systems are a base four battery, 400 amp hour system. That's, that's the base package. Um, we have a modular design where you can add uh, two batteries or eight batteries, depending on whether we use a step box or a frame box or whatever, to where if you're running those hot conditions or you sit a little bit more, if you do flatbed and, and you might sit for a day or two, you know, we could go to eight batteries and we can get you up to that point where you can get you know, safely in, in optimal conditions, can get a 34 hour restart without starting your truck. And there's other ways to mitigate that as well. We offer a shore power option. That's where if you've got a little generator or if you're at, uh, you know, if you do concert tours or whatever, or at venues where you can plug into an extension cord or a lot of truck stops out there these days also have like shore power. Uh, I know several of them that I've been to back in my driving days, uh, you know, where you can you pay or whatever and can hook up, you know, for 30 bucks a day for, for power uh, to where you could just run indefinitely just like a, an RV does in an RV park. So, so there's other ways to extend that time in, up up to and including uh, solar panels as well. So that, uh, solar panels are another way, again, that'd be a whole other topic, uh, to where you can actually, you know, eat away some of that draw where you might be able to get this down, you know, only to 10 amps. So if you had uh, good solar panels and a good system and you were in good uh, conditions for solar generation, to where you could knock this number down and get a lot more uh, capacity out of your system in runtime. Uh, the other part of this now is charging. How long does it take to charge? There's a lot of variables in that as well. So first, again, it depends on the size of the system and also the size of alternator that you have. I know we've seen with, with a lot of the older systems out there that have been in, in place for a while, they're using the AGM batteries. Most of them are using eight AGM batteries. So you're looking at a, an eight, theoretically an 800 amp hour system. It's gonna take a lot longer to charge that. And with that also, the Charging profiles of different types of batteries are all different as well. So we have a little smart charger here. And as you can see, you got regular lithium, you got AGM slash lead, and then you got the uh, lithium iron uh, lithium iron batteries as well. So, so and, and the reason they have these different modes is because the way that they charge is different. So, so different batteries can take longer to charge than other ones. So again, depending on like what your alternator is, uh, I know we've seen with our, the batteries that we're putting in our systems with a stock 160-ish amp alternator, we're seeing about 20 amps, 15 to 20 amps per battery. Cause we, our batteries have a Bluetooth app where you can actually, when the truck's running or not running, you can get on and see your discharge rate and also your charge rate. So in, when you see your charge rate, it shows a little negative and cause, because it's actually putting juice back into the battery. Again, we've typically seen uh, 15 to 20 amps with our batteries per battery. So it'd be times four if you were looking at it on our battery app. So we're gonna go with, um, with 80, 20 times four is 80 amps. So that's what we'd be throwing to the batteries. So again, we would divide that number into the capacity of our system and that would give us our total charge time. So, so eight divided by 40 would be five I believe math serves me correct. And so that would put us at, if those batteries were completely dead, down to zero, and you had to charge that full 400 amp capacity, which again, with the batteries that we sell, they're only gonna go down to about 360 before it shuts everything off and you gotta start the truck anyways. So whatever, so if, again, to make this simple, if we're gonna divide the 80 into the 400, and that would give us, you know, five, so that would be five hours. So you'd have to run your truck for five hours at a consistent 80 amps, which we've seen uh, pretty consistently with, with the tests that we've done here, and your batteries would be fully charged again. So now again, uh, AGMs and other, other technologies uh, charge a little bit differently. So they're, these are based on the tests that we, we've done with our batteries. So, so with, again, with that, uh, you've got a clamp meter and you are running AGMs or whatever you're running, uh, you can put your clamp meter on and see actually what, what you're putting into the batteries on the, uh, I usually hook up to the negative side uh, cable and you can see what you're charging at. So, so that's what you need to know, how much capacity you're gonna get. The average, amper, or the full, I, would, I would get the full spectrum of the amperage use of the system you're looking at. And then you can do your own math, you know, accordingly what, what, with the high end and the low end and then a, a good average. Then if you can add in the rest of your uh, appliances that you have in your truck, you can add those numbers in as well. And then you can kind of judge what kind of system you need. And then also at the end of that, you can say, okay, this is how long it's going to take me to charge. So um, we offer a 100 amp uh, shore power system. So with the uh, system that we have, if you were completely dead, uh, you plugged in 
it would take you four hours to charge this system technically. Or again, if we're putting um, 100 amps in and we're just running like off the shore power continuously, then if we were running an average of 36, then that would give you another a surplus of uh, 64 amps where you could run your other your refrigerator, microwave, and all that stuff as well. So, so that's kind of a down and dirty of uh, what you the main points. I mean, it's, we're not going to get into a lot of specifics. Uh, that'd be down the road here, as far as different types of batteries and the pros and cons of those. Like I said, if you're in the market for any APU, these are the first questions I'd be asking. Okay guys, so that's pretty much all we have for today for this topic. Uh, there'll be a lot more coming down the pipeline here. If you're interested in any of our systems or any more information, check out our website at www.powerfoxapu.com. Also right now, we are looking for dealers and installers for our systems uh, in all major metropolitan areas across the United States. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, check out our website or give us a call as well, same website. And with that, uh, you don't necessarily have to have a full shop and invest a lot of money. I mean, actually, I'm kind of looking for some mobile installers as well, that if you've got a van or a service truck, it could be a good fit as well for a little extra income. We've had a lot of calls coming in where we're, you know, it's hard for people to come up to Ohio if they live in California or Texas. So um, we're definitely looking for people that are uh, good business-minded and self-driven and, and want to build something. So, so check that out as well. Uh, with that, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video. And... Um, Hit the bell for the updates.